Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 245, I wanna talk with you about using video in your resilience program. Now, video has become one of the fastest growing parts of content management and content delivery uh, on the internet. We've seen YouTube channels about everything from uh, using Notion to doing business continuity, project management, selling watches in New York, all of these things have become video phenomenon. And it's no different than, it's no different in when it comes to business continuity and crisis management, particularly in this post COVID world where a lot of our work is being done remotely. We're doing it through Zoom and Microsoft Teams or WebEx or other tools. You're really able to use video in a way that you weren't before. And if you think about the success of simple things like Instagram and Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok videos, which often are short, 60 seconds or less, uh, sometimes are remixing other content, all of these have become really effective ways to get quick sound bites, quick chunks of information into the minds of your employees and others. And that has made video a very effective medium. It's one of the reasons why we've launched a YouTube channel with a video version of our podcast every week and that we've begun to use video in other ways as well because it has been so effective. A lot of folks just want to be able to see you as you're delivering this type of content. In fact, we have believe we believe in this so much here at BrightPath. I just spent part of this weekend updating my home office, which is where I am today, with a better camera, more lights, a little more visual effect in the background so that I can make videos at home instead of having to drive you know, up the road to the office and, and doing the work there. So there's a lot of different reasons why video has become so successful and why video could be used as a way to promote awareness, but also give some inside views of what you actually do in resilience. So I'm gonna give you five ways on how resilience leaders can consider using video as an effective means of communication within your organization. The first one is engagement. Uh, video captures attention more effectively than text, a written article, or audio, like a podcast alone. It gives you greater engagement in the messages that you're trying to get across and in the content that you're sharing. And it leads to better retention of information among your employees, among your team members, particularly if you're giving critical updates or instructions. The second is clarity of message. Visual and verbal cues, the body language that we see, that you can see in video, these can help in conveying complex information very clearly and effectively. It reduces misunderstanding and it ensures that all of your employees have a consistent understanding of the message that you're trying to get across. Number three is just a personal connection. Video enables your leaders to present more of a personal touch um, through body language, through facial expressions and the tone of voice that you're using. This fosters a sense of connection and trust and those are crucial during crisis management situations. Fourth is scalability and accessibility. Videos can be distributed across various platforms and devices. It can help you with accessibility issues with employees that are in different locations or might have different needs when it comes to communication, including people who are might be in the field during a crisis or maybe they're in a job that requires them to be more mobile or they work remotely full time. And lastly, is just good documentation and reusability. Videos serve as a permanent record of a communication that you've made. Uh, you can revisit that for training, review, and compliance purposes. It helps ensure that the lessons learned and the best practices are documented and shared widely in the organization. But you can also film a longer video and then grab quick 60 second key points and turn those into shorter videos that you can use. You can even do more of a Gonzo style journalism thing and just record things on an iPhone uh, or an Android phone or an iPad or a similar device and record a quick 45, 60 second update and make that part of the routine of things that you're sharing. For example, you could be in a crisis exercise with your corporation's crisis management team, something that a lot of employees hear about and think sounds really cool, but they never get to see it. 
And so film that short 60 second update, you know, film it, uh, you know, in selfie mode on a phone and have the team in the background working the exercise and you're showing them that inside view and sharing that as an update on your program. That's the kind of content that really gets your team's attention and will prove to be very valuable in building awareness and credibility for your overall resilience program. We think video is a great way to communicate these kind of messages, and we are having a lot of success with it here at Bright Path. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I hope you'll be back next week with another new episode, or rather we'll be back next week with another episode, and we'll hope you join us then. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.